Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at a new lens from Seven Artisans. It's their 50mm f1.8 autofocus lens for the Sony full frame E mount. And uh, what's kind of unique about this is their very first autofocus lens. And full disclosure, this is a prototype model that they sent out to me to kind of preview and share with you. But uh, as always, I'll give you my honest and fair opinion. So I think what Seven Artisans has done here makes a lot of sense, right? Releasing their very first autofocus lens in the 50 millimeter focal length at f1.8. So we have a very fast prime. The focal length is extremely versatile and very popular, as well as the uh, Sony full frame cameras. Now we have no shortage of 50 millimeter primes on the market, right? Because Yangnua has one, Viltrak has one, Sony has several versions themselves. So the Seven Artisans is going to have to kind of stand out in one form or another. Either it's optical quality or it's pricing or it's build quality, etc. So let's take a look at what I think some of the strengths and weaknesses are of this lens. Now what struck me first about this lens was its overall size and weight. This is not a small 50 millimeter f1.8. Uh, it's pretty big as you can see and it comes in at 427 grams so it's pretty hefty. Uh, it is comfortable on my Sony a7R5 here. I really don't have any problems with handling it on this camera. Uh, but that said, if you were to put this say on like an a7C or smaller, uh, this could be a little bit unbalanced but it feels good on my a7R here. Uh, we have a 62 millimeter filter ring thread in the front with a uh, plastic uh, lens hood. Uh, on the outside, we have a focus by wire uh, focusing ring here, and then we also have a aperture ring that goes from f1.8 to f16, uh, and then there's also an A mode here where you can disable the aperture ring and then control the aperture via your front and rear dials. Uh, and one other thing is they have an autofocus manual focus switch here, so you can easily switch you know, to manual focus and back to autofocus if you want. So the overall build quality is very good and I have no problems with that. Um, where I do have a problem is, uh, and these may or may not be deal breakers for you, but the focusing ring is very tight. Uh, it's very smooth, the action, no problem there. There's not like an uneven resistance, but I prefer a little bit lighter action when I'm doing my uh, manual focusing. Also, the aperture ring is uh, not clicked. So it's a very smooth turn, you know, from F1.8 to automatic or disabled and you know, it's also very tight, but that's good because I never found myself accidentally changing the aperture in the field. So I don't mind that that's very stiff, but the focusing ring I prefer to be, uh, have a little lighter action. The autofocus manual focus switch uh, feels a little cheap. Um, what they need to do there is uh, either recess the button into the lens more so it doesn't stick out quite so much or um, put a bevel around it, right? Like a lot of other manufacturers do. but. Other than that, uh, the lens hood is very secure. You know, nice full metal lens mount onto the camera. Uh, there's no weather sealing to speak of, but um, that's okay. I think it, depending on the price point, that shouldn't be an issue. Now there's a reason this lens is larger than maybe some of the other brands because it has 11 elements and nine groups. And I think optically speaking, this lens is actually very, very good, if not excellent. And what I mean by that is that we started at F1.8, we're already at about 90% of the sharpness of this lens. And then by f2.8, uh, we're at 99%. And by f5.6, you're at the sharpest this lens is ever going to be. And it stays that way up to about f11, where we're back down to about 99%. Then at f16, we're down to about 90% of the overall sharpness of this lens. And it does this sharpness uh, corner to corner. Uh, there's very, very little field curvature in this lens, as represented in the uh, MTF chart that they gave me, but also in my own testing. So. This lens is sharp. Now, it's not as sharp as my Zeiss 55 millimeter, but for all intents and purposes, uh, you just add a tiny bit of sharpening and post-processing, and it'd be extremely hard to tell the difference between this lens and my $1,000 uh, 55 millimeter lens. Now, another optical strength of this lens is the chromatic aberrations. They're fairly minimal, even at f1.8, and by f2.8, they're virtually gone. And if you're shooting in JPEG and using all the in-camera corrections, uh, there's virtually no chromatic aberration across the aperture range. Another strength of this lens is its coma performance where, you know, if you're doing any kind of astrophotography or looking at very small pinpoints of light, uh, the coma is pretty minimal even wide open. Again, if you stop it down to f2.8, it's virtually gone. So if you want to do astrophotography or you're worried about those little pinpoints of light, maybe say in uh, nighttime street photography, uh, this is another area where this lens does very well. 
Now the lens is designed with 11 rounded aperture blades and the transition from what's in focus to out of focus is very, very smooth. And the out of focus areas or background blur is very, very creamy and buttery. It's not busy at all. And if you're shooting speculars, the, the bokeh balls wide open are nicely round until you get towards the edges where they have more of a cat's eye effect, um, which is to be expected when the lens is physically uh, this long in length. Uh, however, when you stop the lens down, uh, the, the bokeh balls stay very, very round. There, you might see some edges there, but for the most part, uh, I think they, they've done a very good job of maintaining a very smooth uh, bokeh and nice, smooth, and creamy uh, background blur. Now, not everything is perfect or great with this lens. There are some minor optical deficiencies. So I'll start with the smallest ones, and then we'll work our way up to what I think is the biggest problem. Uh, the smallest problem really is the barrel distortion. Uh, there's a very, very minor pin cushion distortion. And if you're shooting JPEG, it's not going to be any problem at all. The in-camera corrections fix that very nicely. Uh, but when you're shooting in RAW, you may have to dial in 1% or 2% to uh, get it optically perfect. Uh, and you're not even going to notice it, probably 99% of your uh, photography. But if you're shooting a grid, you know, you may see it. The next minor problem, I think, is the vignetting. Uh, there is a constant vignetting starting at f1.8, and it gradually dissipates by the time you get to about f5.6, but it's there. And again, this is something that's very easily fixed in post-processing. And personally, I don't mind it. I, I prefer a little vignetting wide open, but um, if you do want to correct for that, uh, it's very easy to do in post-processing. And then finally, what I think the biggest optical shortcoming of this lens is, is really in the ghosting and flaring performance. Now, of course, if you point this lens directly into the sun, you're going to get ghosting and flaring. Uh, but even when the light source is just outside of the frame, uh, it can reduce contrast and or flare depending on how the light hits even the lens hood uh, or bounces inside the barrel of the lens itself. And this, of course, is partially due because of the overall length of the lens and, you know, the number of elements, right? We have 11 elements and 9 groups. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, between those groups or elements for the light to bounce back and forth and cause these reflections and ghosting and flaring. And obviously the way to avoid this is to recompose your shots so that the light doesn't enter the lens in a way that would cause this ghosting and flaring. But it is indicative of the anti-reflective coatings that they use on the lens. Uh, it's not as good as some other uh, lens manufacturers use. Now let's talk about the autofocus performance and my real world experience in using this lens. And this lens uses a stepping motor for the autofocus so it's not as fast as some of my other lenses that say use linear motors. And what I noticed was it takes about a half a second to go, say, from minimum focusing distance to infinity, uh, which can be a problem, uh, and it is a problem. Uh, you know, you can miss that decisive moment, for example. Uh, but where I noticed the biggest problem was really when I was doing continuous shooting with continuous autofocus, uh, the autofocusing motors were really not fast enough to keep up with even someone just walking towards me. Uh, you know, in the shot. Now, if you're just doing point and shoot, no problem at all. And, you know, if your uh, lens is already focused somewhere near the focal plane that you want to be on, it's nearly instantaneous. But when you're, when you're just raising the camera up to get a shot, uh, there is about a half a second delay before it actually acquires focus. But once it does, the focus is extremely accurate. I didn't notice any uh, sort of back focusing or front focusing. And also the uh, tracking is very good. Now in video mode, uh, the autofocus is actually very good and as good as any of the lenses that I have. Uh, you know, so even if you're focusing on someone walking around, the camera will track it just fine and, uh, you know, and stay on focus without really any problems. Now speaking of minimum focusing distance, it's about a half a meter, about this much. And so I took a picture of my camera here and you can see it's not going to be really a close up or macro lens by any means. but. Uh, you can get close enough to say maybe a bouquet of flowers like in this shot here. And the good thing is, is that the lens is still very, very sharp, even at the minimum focusing distance all the way out to infinity. Now, at this point in the process, it's very difficult for me to make a recommendation on this lens because I don't know what the pricing is going to be. Uh, if it's going to be in the two to $300 range, I could probably highly recommend this lens because I think the optical performance of this lens, the positives of it, far outweigh the negative optical attributes that I've talked about. And as far as the handling, like the focus ring and the aperture ring, um, I think those things are kind of irrelevant because most of us are going to be doing autofocus 
and using aperture priority and changing that via the thumb wheel. And they may make changes in the final production model anyway, but if we're talking about four, five, six hundred dollar lenses, that's when we need to start looking at lenses from all the manufacturers and considering the pros and cons of each uh, and then seeing which one might be best for you. So I hope you enjoyed this preview of the new Seven Artisans 50mm f1.8 autofocus lens. And if you find these videos helpful and would like to support the work that I do here, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below because they are greatly appreciated and they help me to continue making videos like this for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.